Shot Pro video. Previously, I made a video on vector graphics and kind of tried to introduce it. As I look back on it, uh, it had a lot of other elements into it, and it didn't really focus on just very slowly walking someone through creating things in vector graphics. It was really kind of more like a commentary. So I'm going to do more videos that really just cover the basics of vector graphics and probably focusing on creating just different simple cartoon characters. So in this particular one, we're going to do some very basic vector graphic operations creating the character Molang. So to start off, I'm going to create a blank canvas and I'm just going to have it be standard HD dimensions. And we are going to create a background, but this time instead of using art media, I'm going to use vector graphics. And Molang is a very, you know, very simple, very cutesy kids kind of show setup. So um, we're just going to have a very basic floor and background. And so um, to do that, I'm just going to flood fill the back with a pattern and then draw a rectangle and give it a different pattern. And that'll be the border between our background and our floor. So actually, I like this pattern for the wall. So what I'm going to do is select the background, choose the flood fill tool, and then just flood fill the background. And then I'm going to select my vector rectangle, which I drew for the floor and change that material to a different pattern. So with the vector graphic selected, I can right click on here, choose other, and then find a pattern that matches a floor like look that I want to go for better. So it seems like you have to have the rectangle tool selected if you want to change the material of the rectangle. So I'm going to select it and then go to other material. Go to pattern once again, find the pattern that I want to use, which maybe we'll do this or this. So then it'll generate that pattern on the floor. So now we have our background. Next, what we're going to do is draw the body of Molang. And Molang is just sort of like a blob looking kind of bean guy, but I think he's supposed to be a rabbit. So um, one thing that's characterized about this character, this cartoon character is it has a very pronounced outline to it and a white fill. So we're going to set our materials to match that. We're going to create a new vector layer. And then with the ellipse tool selected, um, it can be circle or ellipse. It really doesn't matter because we're going to adjust it anyway. Uh, we'll just draw a general shape that'll be his size. So we've got our characteristic brown outline and our white fill. And you may have to play with the width to get how big, you know, how thick this line is. I kind of liked this, just relatively speaking. Um, so I used about 12.62. So now that we've created that basic shape, um, what we can do is select the pen tool. And this is kind of the key transition, is that instead of just manipulating it as a circle, we can start playing with the nodes. But first, what we need to do is right-click somewhere on that vector object and say Convert to Path. And then what this does is this now allows us to individually select the nodes to manipulate them. So I'm going to play with these nodes to kind of give that more characteristic bean shape of Molang. So you can see I can click the node and I can drag it or I can, you know, manipulate these handles to kind of change the shape. I can also um, manipulate the handles in such a way as to shrink or expand, you know, just how much influence that one nose has on the shape. So we'll kind of move this guy in, maybe grab this node and pull it out. And sometimes if you need to be able to manipulate one handle independent of the other, but maintain their relationship in terms of axis, you can right click on it, go to node type and select asymmetric. And what this does is it allows me to at least change the length of one handle without affecting the other. But they're still linked in terms of angle.
And this is where a lot of the finesse comes in, is just really refining these nodes to get the shape you're looking for. So here we have the general shape. It's kind of like a bean shape, but a very round bean shape. Um, and one thing I recommend as we start building Molang up is whenever you create a new element of the character, you'll want to add it on a new vector layer. So um, another simple um, addition to this character is to add ears. And in this case, we'll want to use the oval shape because the ears are actually oval shaped. So we can just very simply create an oval. Maybe move it a little bit to the side. And then um, very simply, since he has two ears, if I like this shape, I can just hit Control C and then copy with Control G. And then in, with Control G, I have the ability to position this copy wherever I want before I lay it down. And his ears tend to kind of lean towards each other. So we'll tilt these in by using this rotation handle. And then since we put it on a separate layer, we can very easily drag that layer behind the body to put the ears behind his head. And as well, since we have the whole layer selected, we can man maneuver the two vector objects together. If we want to make it higher, or if we want to make it lower, or if we want to even widen it a little bit. All of that control is available. So next I'm going to add the eyes. And so since that's a new aspect of the character, we'll create a new layer. And for his eyes, it's just a very simple circle. So we'll go back to our ellipse shape, but select circle. But in this case, since we don't really want a border, but we just want a fill, what we can do is swap these so that the brown is now the fill. And we can turn off the outline so that it doesn't affect our shape. And then we can just very simply draw the nice, tiny, beady eyes. But you'll notice nothing happened, and that's because that vector layer is behind the body. So I need to move that vector object to the front, and there's our eye again. And just like the ears with the pick tool selected, I can copy and paste with Control C and Control G. And then I can position where that second eye is. And then we'll create a, another layer, because now what we're going to do is draw um, his sort of cheek blush, if you will. And so I like to keep this brown available even though it's in our recents. So what I like to do is just swap, hide this one, and then change this color to like a pink. And so then now I can draw the cheek circles. That looks about right. Not in the right position, but I can very simply use the pick tool to move it to where I'd like it to be. And then copy, position the other one. And now the cheeks um, blush uh, typically go behind the eyes. So once again, very easily just dragging it behind. And there we go. So next, um, let's draw the arms and legs. And in this case, that is also very simple and still using the ellipse tool. But first, since we're adding another object, we'll create a new vector layer, change to ellipse. Let's adjust our materials once again, so that we are back to the brown border, white body color. And we'll just draw one ellipse to start off with. And he has much more of a, a very rounded rectangle for the shape of the hands so or the arms and legs. So what I'm going to do is go back to the pen tool. And we're going to convert to path. And then for the bottom node, I'm just going to expand it a little bit just so that it has more of that like sort of round squared rounded look and less of like the pointy look up here. Now. What you'll notice is for us to get the effect of that arm being attached instead of a, a um, instead of an ellipse just floating over the top, what we need to do is kind of cut it off and then remove the top. So this is where the knife tool up here comes into play. And what we can simply do is just drag a line across wherever it is that we want to cut. 
and then go back to the selection tool. And since we have a node on the piece that we want to actually remove, we can select it and hit delete. And then what that leaves us with is something that looks like just an arm, if you will, and no closing line. And then we can just as well move these points to kind of get it to look a little bit more like the way we would want it to be so that it's like a little more straight, for example. All right, and maybe make it a little bit bigger. All right, so we have one arm and we can just drag it into our body here. Actually, probably make it a little smaller. There we go. So we can have one arm here and we can just copy Control G, Control C, Control G and then add another one. But what's interesting here is that if I want this arm to actually be hidden behind the body, I'll need to put it on its own layer. So what might be more appropriate is to, on this one layer, only put the things that are going to be in the front and then we'll create another layer for all the things that are going to be in the back. So instead of that being an arm, I'll make this be a leg and his feet seem to be a little bit wider, ever so slightly. All right, so then creating another vector layer, except this one is going to be behind the body, but still what we can do is on this layer, we can select one of these guys, hit Control, G, Control C, then go down to the layer where the legs are that, or the, the appendages that are gonna be behind are, go to that layer, and then still hit Control G. And then now, that one will appear behind. So then going back to the top again, going down to the layer where the arms are behind, Control G. Okay, we're doing pretty good. All we need left now is just the mouth, basically. So we'll go kind of to the top. Let's add a new vector layer since we are creating a new object. And his his mouth is really kind of a combination of the, you know, over lips and then the part that's sort of like the opening. So we'll start with the opening of his mouth. And this has the same characteristic uh, brown outline, but instead of a white, in internals it's more of like a like a orangey a, you know pink a darker pink kind of orangey color maybe maybe something like that we'll try that so we'll go back to our ellipse tool and we have the ellipse shape selected and we'll just kind of draw an oval here And you know, looking at some references, this this outline actually is a little bit thinner. So we'll kind of bring this down maybe to like 10. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll want to give it a little bit of an angle so it matches the uh angle of the uh, you know alignment of the eyes. And this this is pretty small. It's not it's not very big. And this is another opportunity to use the knife tool, um, just because we don't need this whole thing. We really only need kind of the bottom. So I need to select the knife tool under the pen tools. Draw a line. Ah, except first, before I can perform pen manipulations on a vector graphic, I need to first convert it to path. So you may run into that sometimes. If you're working on a vector graphic and you realize you can't do pen tool operations, make sure you've done the convert to path operation first. So now that we've done that, let's draw our line. And now we've created our cut. And then we can select the node that's on the piece we don't want and hit delete. All right. So we've got the first part of the mouth, probably a little bit smaller even. And now we need to draw the sort of lips, the, the overhanging lips. So for this, what I would recommend is 
Um, so still using our outline, but a white background. Create this on a new layer so it can hover above the mouthpiece that we have. And I'm going to use the, the Bezier curve for this drawing. So we have the pen, we have the Bezier curve, we have our brown outline, we want a white fill in this case. And so what I can do is I can just click here, then click sort of the middle, and then drag it so that it kind of creates this curve, right? And this will give me sort of that look of like the bunny you know, mouth or, or whatnot. So next what I can do is pick the straight edge tool and then draw another point kind of straight up where we want it to be. Now what you'll notice is it kind of, it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. And part of that has to do with the fact that this node to create that sharp corner needs to be of a different type. So we want to change that node to what's called cusp. And what this does is it allows me to independently change both length and angle of these two handles. So whereas this handle is preserved to create that curve, this handle now could point straight up to create that straight line. So now I can copy again, paste, except in this case, what I want to do is invert it so I can just drag it from one side to the other and you'll notice it changes it so that it is now facing the other way and then I can just rotate it so that it aligns with the other one and there we go so now that I have all the pieces together I realize there's a few things that I'd like to do to kind of adjust it a little bit one being um, I want to make the mouth smaller so what I can do is highlight those two layers and now that gives me all the pieces that just make up the mouth and then I can shrink it and then also I think the eyes need to be a little smaller and moved further apart and if I want to preserve that size with the other eyeball I can just delete the other eyeball take the one I just changed and copy and paste it and then at this stage, it's really just kind of refining exactly how it looks just to, you know, make sure that the proportions are appropriate and that the character really does look like how you want them to look. Sometimes making layer groups, if you know you're going to be working on pieces as a group, can help. And then finally, at the very end, um, we'll just add a very light shadow to the bottom. Again, just another vector object and an ellipse. We'll want an ellipse this time. And in this case, um, we can probably just use like a dark gray. Just kind of eyeball where it might make sense for there to be a shadow and then reduce the opacity just so that it doesn't have such a strong effect on everything. And that's it. So as you can see, primarily just used ellipses, um, the ellipse shape in this case. Uh, and in some cases, we also use the pen tool, but um, remembering that if we want to have the ability to manipulate uh, vector shapes like the ellipse or rectangle or presets or symmetrics they always have to be converted to path first because essentially that's just converting it to what the pen tool knows how to manipulate anyway i hope this was helpful i hope you learned a little bit uh, more simply how to do some basic operations with vector graphics and being able to create a lot of different kinds of shapes and being able to do cutoffs and if you have any questions about that just feel free uh, to leave a, you know it in the comments or if you have some suggestions of other vector graphic projects you'd like me to cover feel free to leave those in the comments as well if you'd like to be updated of new content go ahead and subscribe and if you'd like to support me or this channel check out my patreon page where the uh, PSP image for these is going to be made available and I'll see you guys next time